By the end of this video, you will know how to make a face mask, what materials to use and why, and even how by making these at home, you can help save lives. I'm Dr. Ryan Southworth, board certified emergency medicine physician and emergency medical services medical director. Many of you have started making homemade cotton masks in case our masks run out, and we are out on the front line, are very grateful for your support. However, hospitals, emergency rooms, and medical staff are already on very short supply and this virus hasn't even hit all our communities yet. Plus, as nice as cotton is, it just isn't designed to be a filter. The virus can still get through the tiny holes in the fabric. I believe that this is the best mask you can make at home and donate to your emergency medical services in your area. Why is that? It's mainly in the material. A standard HEPA filter vacuum bag. This is an OSHA certified material that filters out 99.97% of airborne particulate matter per OSHA standards. I'm confident that this mask will save lives. Now as a physician, I have to give you a disclaimer because this hasn't gone through rigorous testing, but I'm very impressed with the clinical results. I wore this mask around the house for a prolonged period of time and even cooked bacon to see if I could clearly smell it. I could not, so this seems to confirm to me that both the material and the seal work as intended. It's also worth noting that any mask is better than no mask. In fact, the CDC recommends in their current publication that, quote, it may be considered to use these homemade masks for the care of patients with COVID-19. But I think that this specific material and design is the best that we can do at home. N95 masks must seal to the face tightly to work. The duckbill style is particularly popular. And with a sewing machine, some scissors, and elastic with a standard HEPA filter vacuum bag, my wife figured out how you can create a mask that can save lives. She is my hero for figuring out how to make these. And if it wasn't for her, I couldn't serve you and your family. She does her best to keep me safe so I can do my best to help you. Now, here's the hero who figured out how to actually make these, my wife, Amy Southworth. Wait, and please, before you proceed with the video, ensure that no one in your home is currently showing any symptoms or has been diagnosed with COVID-19. Before starting this project, please wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water. Also, be sure to use the first mask you make as both a test of quality and to ensure that you do not breathe on any of the other masks you produce. Transport these in a clean and safe state. Thank you. Hey guys, today we're going to make a mask. So we're going to show you the supplies that you need to make it. First, you need these HEPA bags. These are just from vacuums, the bags you would use. The important thing is it's HEPA because it traps 99.9% .9 of dust and pollen. So you, you're getting that protection you need for these masks versus like a cotton mask. You also need a glue gun with a glue stick a pipe cleaner, a pencil, elastic, thread for your sewing machine, scissors, and a template. And this template you can find and you can download it yourself. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your elastic and you're gonna make it the length of this piece of paper, which should be 11 inches. So you just go from one end until the other, and then you're gonna take your scissors and you're going to just snip it off. That's the length you need for this mask. The second step is that you're gonna take that elastic and you're gonna cut it in half lengthwise. If you have around the house this size elastic, you can just cut off two of those. Whatever you have at home, please do not go out to your store and buy this. The next part is you're going to want to cut out your template. This is a template for a regular size mask. We're also gonna have a template for a small size. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna cut out the template along this black line. And I know some of you are cringing because I'm using my fabric scissors. So here's the bag. When you open it up, you're gonna actually get two bags. And with each vacuum bag, you should be able to make four masks. First, we need to expand these sides. So we're gonna very carefully cut to bring those sides out. And you're gonna have to do it to all four spots. And you really wanna do this carefully so you don't mess up. So you wanna kinda scrunch it and then just 
make an incision. So you just cut it and just cut along the side. If you are sick, do not make these for people. Or if you think you have been exposed, you do not want to make these. So once you have both sides, you kind of go in with your finger because it's connected right here. And then you just put your scissors there and snip it. And so that's gonna bring out your side, like so. And so you wanna do that with each end. So now your bag should be able to lay it flat. And the next step is you want to take, I'll flip it just so you have a clean thing. You want to take your pattern and you actually want to line it on this edge because you want that sealing to keep your mask sealed. As you can see on this one, we kept it. So you're just going to line it up now, we're not using pins because we don't want to make any holes along here, just to keep it as safe as possible. Normally, we pin patterns, but this time we are not because we don't want those little punctures in the mask. Here's the first one traced. I already pre-traced one for you to see. I did it in pink just so you could see it. And you can see they're pretty close together, so you have to be careful when you do the patterns, but you can see it makes one, two, three, and then four. And what you could do also, if you want regular and small, you could do the two regulars on the shorter ends and you can do the smaller ones here. After you have them all traced, you're gonna cut the masks out. You want to try to keep it as flat as you get as you can. Again, I'm not going to pin it because I don't want puncture marks in this. So here's one. There's an extra layer of plastic that is put in these to make the bag sturdy in the vacuum. That actually does not have anything to do with the filter but um, we don't want that part for the ones that are gonna have it. So you're gonna wanna cut that part out. So this one, see how it has that extra piece of plastic? You're gonna wanna just cut that out. And you do have to be careful when you cut the sides because I accidentally cut this and you can see that it didn't go all the way through but I mean, it's not as good. So you, that's why when you're doing the initial cutting, you have to make sure you only have the one layer. So now we have our four masks. The next step is for the front part of the mask to be able to have some kind of metal so you can pinch it around your nose we're gonna insert a pipe cleaner. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take a pipe cleaner and fold it in half, like so. There's different layers to this. So you're just gonna take top layer, you're gonna see a piece of plastic, and then you have the top layer. You're gonna want to um, place it about here because you wanna make sure you have room to sew it shut. Hot guns, you have to be careful because if it's too hot, you're gonna burn through that plastic and then it's gonna be no good. So I'm gonna glue it. I'm gonna wait a little bit. Center it. Press down. So you don't, and then you can also like take it and just press down like so. Just double check it to make sure you didn't go through the fabric. This one for some reason. And make sure it still stays even with the rest of the mask. So your mask is gonna look like this. Once you have that step done, you're gonna flip your mask over 
And then on your sewing, you're gonna put this out here and you're gonna sew where my finger is, right along here. And you're gonna do that to the other side as well. Remember this is a little bit longer, so you want it longer. The two sides of elastic flush with the pattern and then you're gonna sew on each side. And then you're also going to do the same thing to the other side of the mask. We just wanna make sure we sew this elastic in well enough that it's gonna hold its shape. So we're gonna move over to the sewing machine and sew it. Okay, the next step is we're gonna sew along here and also along here. I am purposely not using needles because I don't wanna puncture the mask. I'm gonna line up the fabric to the edge right here of my foot and I'm just as much as I can and I'm gonna sew. Nose thing, if you need to stop to reposition your fabric, that's fine because you're probably gonna have to because you don't have your little needles to help you out. So once I have the two sides sewn, and I did it in a color just so you can see it, I'm gonna flip it over. You're gonna put your elastic along the edge and then the other one. You want it flush to the two corners, but you want it a little forward and you can till about there. And you're just gonna sew along here. And then on the other side, you're gonna sew along here. And you're also gonna do that to the other end of the mask because I really wanna not puncture the mask. one side, now I'm gonna do the other side. So now you have all these parts together. You're gonna to refold your mask. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew along this edge right here, and then I'm gonna flip it and then sew a little bit closer on the inside. And then if you wanted to, you can press the button, if you have it, to close it on the end. And then if you, you just trim off all your extra threads and then that's it, you have your mask. If you are making this for someone else, do not try it on to make sure it fits because then you throw all of that cleanliness out the window. And it goes on the person and once they put it on, the part with this goes along the bridge of their nose and they can um, move it so it secures. But there you have your mask and you have two pieces of elastic to cover your head properly. If you are a healthcare worker, the CDC says that homemade masks can be used as a last resort, but with a few days worth of masks and countries like China not able to keep up with demand, I'm afraid we could go down the same route. And if we have a last resort, why not a HEPA filter? So based on very much non-scientific study done at my home, I would much rather have one of these than a cotton mask. So if you can sew a cotton mask and have some extra HEPA vacuum bags, even one mask will help save lives, I believe. Thank you for supporting the front line in the crisis. Please, please, please share this video with everyone. Social distancing works. Like and subscribe so you can follow along with me as this unfolds. And if I get infected, I'll let you know firsthand how it is. Again, the most important thing is to share this video with everyone you know so we can reach everyone and get the support we need on the front lines. Thank you.